Hi, I'm Jeremy. In my intro to booktube tag video, I mentioned a comic called The Runaways, which was partially responsible for getting me into reading comics and graphic novels. And recently, I got my hands on Volume 2. Very excited to read it. And I'm, you can be sure that I'm going to be reviewing it, too. But first, I should review Volume 1, because why not? And it's something I've been wanting to make a video on, because people have asked me, like, what do you recommend for reading graphic novels to start with? And, well, I'm not an expert on the matter by any means. It's something I'm fairly recently in my life getting into. I honestly think that Runaways is an excellent place to start if you're used to reading young adult novels, usually. So I'm just going to talk about it. I don't actually have a copy of Volume 1 because I got it from a library, and it's been a while since I've read it, so this is going to be mostly from memory, but I'm going to do my best. Something to know is that because this is a comic and it was originally released in, like, separate issues, it's hard to find each issue individually, and it's hard to know what you're supposed to buy and read. And what I read was The Complete Collection, Volume 1, because my library had it. I don't know how easy that is to find. I think if you're buying online or in most comic stores, it's actually going to be kind of harder to find that. You're more likely to find the smaller volumes that are... There's going to be still, like, numbered, like, Volume 1, 2, and 3 and such. And they have names, like, the first one is... I think the first one's called Pride and Joy and stuff like... It goes on, but... I'm reviewing The Complete Collection, Volume 1, and I don't know how many of the smaller volumes that it contains, but there's a very clear start and end to this first story arc, and that's what I'm going to be reviewing here. If you can get your hands on the complete collection, that's the best way to do it. Um, the volume 2 that I had, this is also the complete collection, so I'm assuming it's going to be the same way, how it's like its own story arc. That's just something that's hard about reading comics. I wish it wasn't that way, but just try to read it in order. This comic takes place in the Marvel Universe, so it's in the same world as, like, Spider-Man, the Avengers, the X-Men, all of that. And while there are references and appearances of other Marvel characters, it, for the most part, you can very much understand the story without knowing a lot about the greater Marvel Universe, but knowing it takes place in the same world is pretty cool. It's about this group of kids and teenagers who they've known each other all their lives, but never really, like, bonded with. Every year their parents, who are pretty rich, have this meeting with each other. And while they're at the meeting, the kids are just supposed to, like, hang out with each other and do whatever, but they're told they, they're not supposed to go to see what the parents are doing. They're not supposed to interrupt the meeting. It's very bad if that happens. That's what they've always been taught. But one year, Alex Wilder, one of the kids, decides, today, Let's just, let's break the rules. We've been, we, we don't know enough about our parents as it is. We've been told not to interrupt them, but we're just so freaking curious. We need to know. So they do. They go, they, they spy on them. And what they see is their parents committing human sacrifice to some random innocent teenage girl. And they're obviously, like, shocked beyond belief. Like, what? Everything I know is a lie. After that, they're like, we can't trust our parents anymore. What are we going to do? We can't, like, live with them anymore. So what do they do? They run away, hence the title. But before doing that, they're like, they know that their parents, there must be more to their parents than they know. Well, obviously there is. They saw them committing human sacrifice. They need to find out more because they're just so curious how much more have they made, they've been hiding from them. So what they do, they go to their houses, they, like, search and investigate stuff, and each of them finds something or finds out something about themselves. This is where you and you get introduced to the members of the team. Alex Wilder, who I mentioned, he doesn't have any weapons or like powers. He's he's just establishes himself as like just the leader because he's very smart, like very logical and smart. And everything that makes a good leader. You've got Chase Stein, who goes to his house and he finds this weird foreign technology that his parents had been hiding. He, they're called. The Fistagons, they're these weaponized gloves that shoot fire and stuff. They're really cool. He also finds x-ray goggles and stuff like that. Then we've got Nico Minoru, who finds this staff that, like, bonds with her so she can cast, like, dark magic and such. Then we've got Molly Hayes, who's the youngest of the group, and she finds out that she's a mutant. 
she's eligible to join the X-Men, like that kind of mutant. And she has super strength. Then we have Carolina Dean, who finds her ability to fly and also control solar energy. Hers is probably the most unique power of the group. And it's kind of hard to like understand what it is without just like seeing it. And then we have um, Gertrude Yorks, who at her house, she finds a dinosaur that she has a telepathic connection with. How cool is that? Once they find out all their powers and abilities, they're a, they're a legitimate superhero team now, but they're, they're just still like running away from their parents, um, trying not to get found by them. So they, they hide out in places, they make like a temporary secret lair, and just learn about themselves as they're on this mission to like spread the word about their parents and eventually confront them and, like, fight them. What makes this story so interesting is because it's so different and new for the Marvel Universe, it's focusing entirely on a group of adolescents who aren't sidekicks, they're their own entity. That's a very important part of the group dynamic. And each of them is very believable and unique in their own right. All their pa not just their powers are cool, obviously, but it's not just their powers, it's their personalities, too. The relationships and dynamics they form with each other all develop naturally and believably, and obviously there's still gonna be conflict in the group because they're so different, even though they've known each other all their lives, never, like, really known each other, never bonded. The parents are such a, a, a good, weirdly relatable, like, villain. That's a... It, it makes a lot of sense to make a book about adolescent superheroes and have the villain be the parents. They're just, they're just scary, the fact that they committed human sacrifice and hid all this stuff from their children their whole life. And obviously, I'm hoping that none of you who are watching this, that your parents commit human sacrifice, but there are things that parents hide from their children. That's a very relatable theme. Conflict between, um, father and son, mother and son, father and daughter, mother and daughter, that's all very relatable to the target audience of this. The progression of the plot is really interesting. It's, some parts are slow, I guess, but for the most part you know that more is coming. There's a huge plot twist that I'm not going to say anything about near the end that just flips everything upside down. The climax of the story is really good. It, it's everything you expected and more. This is an origin story, basically, and it's one of the most unique and fun and exciting and suspenseful origin stories that we've seen in Marvel Comics. The first run of this series, at least, was drawn by Adrian Alfona, and the art is really good. I like it a lot. It's the right balance of realistic and um, comic-y. It, it, it works really well for the story, each character has a unique look to them, and it's just very pleasant to look at, absolutely. Especially in the covers also are really good. But obviously, the book, you're more concerned with what's inside the book and the panels themselves. But even those, they look, they look great. They look, they do their job more than enough. I'm getting to the point now where I, I just, because I haven't read this in so long, I don't really have much else to say. But I cannot recommend this enough. If you have ever thought about getting into reading comics, but you're more used to reading, like, prose, like, novels, just regular novels and young adult fiction and such, there's no better place to start than this. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Fun fact, Marvel was actually in the plans to make a movie for this, but they just, they canceled it because they didn't think there was enough of an audience for it, and they had bigger projects to work on, like the Avengers and... Captain America and all that. I still have hope that it's going to happen eventually, because now that they've tested the waters with their more obscure teams like Guardians of the Galaxy and even Ant-Man, I, I really hope that they go back to making this as a movie, because it would be a fantastic Marvel movie. So that's all I've got to say about Runaways Volume 1 for now. Please check it out if you're at all interested, and be on the lookout for my review of Volume 2, which I am so excited to read. I'm glad I finally got my hands on this. Um... Bye!